Hi, this is our episode number three of the B series talking about the Tudors. We are now going to look at the biggest one, Henry VIII. Anna, uh, would you say that even without Henry VIII, England would have become Protestant over the time or not? Well, the extent to which the English people wanted a reformation at the time which Henry VIII uh, ultimately brought it about is much disputed. Some historians would say that there was a kind of desire amongst the people for change, that people were sick of the perceived corruption of the Catholic Church, they were sick and tired of, of priests seemingly holding you know, too many uh, positions, sort of non-attendance in parishes, and that there was a gradual sort of sense of discontent. Others would say that in many cases the Catholic Church was alive and kicking. Yes, there was some sort of, you know, bad fruit, if you like, but actually, you know, all, all in all, it was, you know, in pretty good shape. We don't see the sort of popular upsurge in the way that we see perhaps in Germany and Switzerland. However, gradually new ideas were circulated in England. I mean, there had first of all been a sort of sort of early medieval group, the Lollards, that had, you know, been quite opposed in many cases to the existing church so there was kind of underlying currents and then as we see the reformation uh, spread on the continent those kind of ideas those kind of tracks begin to circulate you know in England too and so and obviously with the growth of literacy more and more people are becoming aware of these ideas um, in many cases though I think I mean Henry VIII of course had actually written against Martin Luther you know he, ironically he'd been given the title by the faith of, dif of the Pope of he'd been given the title by the Pope of Defender of the Faith, you know, the Catholic faith. So it was kind of ironic. Um, but what's important, I think, to emphasise is that, you know, when Henry broke with Rome and established himself as the supreme head of the English church, that didn't mean that overnight everybody became Protestant. And in many ways, the, what really the, the uh, state of religion on Henry's death was what some people have described as Catholicism without the Pope. You know, people's hearts and minds uh, were very much still committed to Catholicism. And although there might have been grumblings, it was going to be a long time before, you know, that Protestant sentiment had really bedded in. Harry was afraid and stressed about not having any male hair. But when, when you look at it, it gave England two of, uh, of its greatest king, sorry, queen. Um, do you think it will be looking down with pride or with surprise? Um, I think he would, I mean, ultimately, I think, you know, Henry would be proud that the Tudor dynasty endured uh, as long as it did. Um, of, you know, and in, in his desire for a male heir, I mean, he wasn't just being particularly, you know, misogynistic as we understand, you know, he just didn't want, you know, daughters on the throne. I mean, you know, society at the time was completely patriarchal. Women were believed to be, ru you know, ruled by emotions rather than reason that they you know they had to they were naturally you know biblically and based on kind of understandings of, of medicine and the body at the time that they were subjected you know they should be subjected to men they were the weaker sex and so in in trying to and his desire for a male heir i mean in a way he was doing what everybody would expect which was to try and you know establish a male succession edward the sixth though his son um of course dies young as a teenager and then Mary and, as you said, ultimately Elizabeth succeed. So I think, although it might not have turned out quite as Henry intended, I think he would have been proud. But of course, what's important to to say is that, you know, ultimately Mary is able to come to the throne, the first queen, his da first daughter, and then Elizabeth, because Henry had placed them at the end of his reign in an act of parliament, and then later in his will, mm -hmm. right at the end of his reign back into the line of succession. So although Henry might have hoped that Edward would reign for a long time and would have children and therefore, you know, those would naturally displace Mary and Elizabeth in the line of succession, it's true to say that, you know, that Mary and Elizabeth had been placed there by Henry. And ultimately it was because of Henry's will that Mary, in spite of the challenge of Lady Jane Grey, uh, was able to succeed in establishing herself as a legitimate monarch and then uh, preserve the succession for Elizabeth. So was, was he a great king? Uh, Henry VIII was an infamous king. I mean, he was one of the most, uh, you know, famous monarchs uh, in history. 
He was very good at certain things in a way that we would sort of recognise as quite modern today. He was very good at sort of brand image. I mean, he was very good at establishing a strong image of himself. I mean, when we think of Henry VIII, you know, we might perhaps think of that Holbein image of, of Henry sort of striking a pose with his sort of very prominent codpiece, all seen as very much a sign of political power. Um, Henry VIII had, you know, a number of failures. I mean, he had a number of failures in the, uh, his campaigns in France, for example. Um, and, but of course, he oversaw profound change uh, in England, you know, the establishment of the, of the church. Um, and relatively speaking, that encountered little opposition. I mean, there was the Pilgrimage of Grace, which was an, op which was a, an uprising in the north, particularly inspired by the dissolution of the monasteries, but not entirely. Um, so a successful monarch, it's a hard, I mean, it's a hard one, um, but I think, yes, I mean, in many ways, um, I think Henry uh, profoundly shaped uh, the English monarchy, and in many cases, you know, not in, 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 in a bad way. So I think, yes, I think he was probably uh, a very controversial figure, uh, and uh, possibly, you know, probably a successful king all in all.